Hello, I'm Alan Newberry, and today we're going to take a look at Delft clay casting, and we're going to make this silver ring right here using some silver scraps and some silver coins. And it's a fun process where you get to make the shape out of wax, and then you use that using the Delft clay to cast a ring or other object. So let's go take a look. This is actually my second attempt at making a video on Delft clay casting. In the first video, I took a ring that my mother had had for many years, but the stone was lost, the settings were broken, and it wasn't really a repairable ring. So we took that and melted it along with a few other bits of scrap gold and made a new ring out of the old ring, which was a family heirloom, but was damaged beyond repair and took kind of a sad thing because she was bummed out about the old ring being broken and now she has a new gold ring that she wears a lot and was made by her son that would be me and uh, she's happy with the ring and now it's back to being a usable piece of jewelry that's one of the great things about delf clay casting is that you can take old jewelry scraps and make them into new things so right here i am packing down the delf clay into the frame uh, I first pack it down with my hand and then hammer it out to get it really nice and tight. Um, a lot of times I will pause and hammer it kind of in the middle even. So after I have done that, I scrape off the excess to get that flat. Uh, a lot of people use a metal ruler. I generally use a bar of steel, but I'm doing this in my kitchen because the lighting was so good in there today. So you get that side nice and flat. Then after that, we're gonna put some baby powder. You can use talc powder, but that's basically what baby powder is, and I had some, so I'll sprinkle that on there, and then I will brush off the excess. Now what this powder is going to do is enable you to separate the two halves. So this is going to keep the top part of the mold and the bottom part of the mold, keep the two from sticking together. We're going to put it on to the clay right here, and then I've got some that I've already put onto the wax ring that I have made. This wax ring I actually made kind of a, a more of a craftsman style versus a, a jeweler style in that I figured out what size my son's ring would be and used a drill bit that was about that size and drilled a hole the size of my son's finger into the wax. So it's kind of a, a quick and dirty method of making a hole in the wax in the size that you need. And then you can tweak it with files and sandpaper or a Dremel. It's kind of fun carving things in wax, and it, it's kind of fun to have that flexibility. Now, on the second half here, I am packing down the sand again, and uh, a lot of times I'm, I'm paying a lot of attention to the area around the ring. I don't want to mess up that area, but I need it to be nice and tight so that it has the good details and so that the sand is not falling apart or not really sand well it, it kind of is the this is basically sand casting but the sand is finer so it's really delft clay casting but it's it's kind of a gritty clay but it's a a fun product they have cheaper products for doing this but this has got better detail than the cheaper casting clays so uh, from from the reviews and things that i've read this is Kind of a superior product but it also costs quite a bit more so it, there's a bit of a trade-off in there now we have the two parts taken apart and you could have used even like your wedding band if you have a simple wedding band i have made a silver copy of my wedding band and gave that to my grandmother as a present so that's a uh, a fun thing that you can do is just make a copy of your wedding band or some other ring that you have. If you have a, a ring that you like the shape of, you can just put it in there because you're not going to try to melt out the wax or the object. 
you can just cast objects directly in there. I guess you could probably take your house key and put it in there and then make a nice uh, silver house key or gold house key if you just really wanted to have an expensive key. Right, I'm, what I'm doing here is I am now carving out what will amount to the funnel to where the uh, I will be pouring in the molten silver and then it's going to go kind of down that little funnel that I made and it will then fill up with silver. So here I am removing the ring. You can use tweezers and things like that. Sometimes you get a little bit of damage that you can kind of push down. If you totally mess up one half but have one good half, which I actually ended up doing in this, is you can just put the other half back in with the ring still in it and then hammer it in and get uh, kind of have a second shot at one of the sides. Anyway, so here I am making the other half of the funnel. And so just make sure it goes all the way down to where your ring is or other object. You could be making a pendant or something like that or even a piece of knife hardware, which is one of the things that I'm wanting to do is make some uh, cast guards and other furniture for my knives. So that's one of the things that got me interested in the process. Right here, I am making some little channels for air to go into so it, the air can kind of escape out of the mold so that I don't end up with kind of like some little air gap in there where the metal didn't go. I want the air to be able to escape fast. And so this is something that you can do to help try to reduce the risk <laughs> of having a bad pour that has, you know, like a little gap in it or some air bubbles in it. So what I do here is cut very thin channels. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of the metal will go in there, uh, which it does in this particular pour. And that's fine. You just snip those off with your pliers. It's not really a big deal, um, but it you know if you get the sizing just right, it's it's good for the air to escape, but the metal doesn't really go down in there. So some of the times I'll get some metal in there, and sometimes I won't. And then I'm kind of poking holes that go outside the mold so that the air can actually escape all the way out of the mold. The other side doesn't need the vents because they're all just carved onto the one side. So then put that back on there and making sure that you don't have your ring still in there because you just want to have a nice ring shaped gap so next thing you do is i'll kind of band that together you can use like rubber bands or something like that i've got a silver quarter i've got a little bit of leftovers from the last time i cast and then i also have some of the scraps from doing silver wire inlay little just pieces and in bits and whatnot and so i'll blow that down with a little bit of the uh, propane torch that is enough to do the small casting it's a, it's hot enough to melt gold and silver and brass and things like that but if you have too much of the metal you're not going to be able to do it so if you had maybe twice that amount of metal it's going to have a hard time melting it all but with this amount of metal the type of size of a pour that you're doing for you know, a normal size ring, it's plenty fine to use propane. You could also use map gas or an oxyacetylene torch would work as well. Uh, the white powder that I've been kind of putting in there off and on is borax, so it's just a little flux. And so as I'm melting that, I kind of tilt it around to get all of the little bits of silver incorporated into my little ball of metal. And then I'm going to be kind of keeping an eye on it to see when it looks the way I want it to look. Here I'm getting kind of close, but whenever I tilt it kind of over to the side, that part of the crucible is not hot. So I'm kind of tilting it over there, but I see it's nowhere that it's kind of robbing the heat from the metal. So now I'm heating up the pour spout as well as the metal. And I'm kind of looking to see that that metal is flowing it kind of looks like a little ball of mercury whenever i wiggle it it moves really well and i can kind of look whenever the there's kind of like a skin over the over the metal and i like to see that that's like really kind of light and just kind of swirling and you know just doesn't seem like there's much there and then whenever it looks just how i want it to look 
I go another maybe 20 or 30 seconds just to double check and make sure. And I'm going to keep that heat on it the whole time, even during the pour. And uh, here I'm about to do the pouring. And that'll make just a little bit of smoke, but it's enough smoke that in my kitchen it sets off the fire alarm, which makes the dog bark and the bird start calling. So I have no sound for these parts of the video. And here is what it looks like as it's poured into the mold. It cools off relatively quickly. Uh, then put it in some water so you don't burn yourself when you hold it. Kind of clean off the little bits of the clay that are still, you know, stuck in a few of the spots. And then I'll show it to you again. And there you go. And that those little those little bits that went into the air channel are very thin. So they're just kind of like a really thin wire and you can just clip those right off, which is uh, the next thing that I'm going to do. Yeah, and here you can kind of see the uh, wax ring that I made along with the silver ring. And here I am cleaning out the burnt bits of clay. Uh, most of the clay you're just going to go ahead and reuse, but you don't really want to mix in the burn bits. So I scrape away the burn bits and I'll throw those away. And the rest of it, I'm going to save to reuse. I've used the same clay over and over. I have actually two packages of clay, but I've yet to bust into the second one because uh, this is plenty enough to put into uh, the size molds that I have. And so I just break that up till I can I get it more into a powder. And then here I am clipping off the uh, extra little bits of silver. And then those, I'll just, next time I'm making something out of silver, I will uh, be incorporating those little bits in. Then I cut off the, the little part that solidified there in the funnel. And then I can kind of break that off. And it'll go into the next time I'm making something out of silver. You can also collect the little bits of silver that came off whenever you cut that off. That would be much more important if you're doing gold because gold's very expensive. Silver isn't so expensive that, you know, you've got to reclaim every last little bit. Whenever it's gold, you're really wanting to claim all those tiny little bits of filings. So you want to be careful with that. And you probably wouldn't go over to the belt grinder with gold because you're going to want to collect uh, little scrapings and filings of the gold. But with silver, it's not as big a deal. And I'm a knife guy, so the the knife grinder is my main tool in the workshop. So you could do the same thing with files and sandpaper, and you'd be able to reclaim a little bit more of the silver or gold if you were using gold. So now I'm just kind of getting rid of that little ridge. There's a little bit of a parting line from the two bits of the mold. And making sure the shape's good, and then going over to the buffer, using your uh, buffing compound of choice, something pretty fine. Um, and then I'll just buff it and make it nice and shiny. And then I'll make sure the edges aren't too sharp. You're going to be, you know, wearing it, which I also was making, that was something that I was paying attention to whenever I was sanding it with that, uh, a little bit of sandpaper a little bit earlier on the inside, making sure it was nice and comfortable. And then this buffing I'm also going to get on those edges. And here it is on my son's hand. Um, there it is. It, I think it looks pretty good. He likes it, and he's been wearing it every day since I made it a few days ago. I hope you had as much fun as I did with this Delft clay casting. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And as always, thanks for watching.